So yeah, in this video I want to briefly talk about how the perceptron and linear regression are related to each other. So you can think of linear regression as a single layer neural network. And I think since you all uh, hopefully know linear regression, this will make things a little bit easier when we talk about gradient descent. And also from there, it's very easy to go to the edit line, so to the adaptive linear neuron. So in this video, I want to just briefly outline this relationship before we talk more about that in the following videos. So um, here's again a sketch of the perceptron algorithm where we have multiple things going on. First we compute the net input based on the features of the data set and the weights and then there's also the bias unit so we have the net input that we compute and then we, so in this general model we have an activation function here and in the case of the perceptron this was the so-called threshold function where we had, if you think of it as a threshold, we had like this threshold function, if the net input z is greater than 0 here, then it returns a 1, and otherwise it returns a 0. So if z is greater than 0, then return a 1, otherwise a 0. That was our um, activation or threshold function. In the case of linear regression, we don't have such a prediction. We only yeah, con uh, return a continuous value, so we don't have a threshold for 0 and 1. And you can think of it then as um, this activation function here in the perceptron or threshold function being the identity function, so not doing anything. An identity function is just a pass through, it's just um, returning the input. So if the input is x to this function, it will also return x. So in this case, in linear regression, the same concept applies as in the perceptron here, so the same computation of the net input, which was um, just multiplying the weights with um, the features and then adding the bias unit. So that is our net input. And yeah, this is also how the prediction and linear regression is created. So yeah, in that way you can think of linear regression as a linear neuron, a single layer neural network. And in earlier statistics classes, um, I'm pretty sure you covered this, so you probably fit a linear regression model uh, like this, like shown below, using these so-called normal equations, which are an analytical solution to the minimization problem in least squares linear regression. So when you wanted to minimize the um, yeah, squared error, you could compute or you could yeah, find a model that minimizes the squared error by using these so-called normal equations. So you have um, if this is your design matrix, x transpose x inverted, so inverse here, um, times x transpose y, if you do that. And if you include um, an additional vector of ones, assuming that the bias in unit is included in w. So if I go back one slide, remember in the perceptron lecture we had this alternative formulation where we didn't have a separate bias unit, we have a one here and then we had the weight 0. If you assume this, if you add this 1 to the inputs, then um, the bias unit will be included in this w. So with this uh, set of, you know, this equation here, you can actually solve for the parameters for linear regression in an optimal way. Um, but yeah, this is not what we will be doing in this class. In this class we will be talking about a different type of algorithm that can also find these parameters. Yeah, to just summarize what I uh, said in the previous slides, so these normal equations here are really um, the recommended approach for least squares linear regression. This is something I would use on a data set. There might be one little caveat if you have a very large data set, then this matrix um, inverse here could become problematic for computer memory. But yeah, honestly, um, I think most data sets are, and on most data sets it would be fine. So this is what I would be using for linear regression practice. However, I am going to introduce, or we, we are going to learn about a different way for learning these parameters iteratively. And the reason why we do that is um, because that's what we are doing in deep learning or for deep neural networks where we have yeah, large data sets, many connections, that is many neurons, and also non-convex loss functions. So for 
Deep Neural Networks, there is no closed form solution, no analytical solution. So in that way, we have to be a little bit creative and use this iterative way. And I, th I think really because um, you're already familiar with linear regression from other statistics classes, that using linear regression to introduce this algorithm will make things a little bit easier. So I will introduce the iterative algorithm in the next uh, video. And then we will talk about some calculus concepts and then yeah, see how it works in practice.